do it in like two seconds. Uh, <laughs> oh, my editor is gonna love this blooper. Um, oh, hi, you're watching Creative Quarantine. I'm gonna act serious for a second, uh, but I'm here. See, the one thing is I have to point in the opposite direction when I'm pointing to the person, which I've had oh. to learn over the last four weeks. Yeah. I'm here with uh, this funny guy who's also a writer, who somewhere in his house, probably right by the Christmas tree has an Emmy, um, which he likes bringing to parties. Uh, and it's how he introduces himself. Is that Besides, what I mean? No, no, you oh, usually introduce yourself. You, you do only your Christmas parties, but you do, I one of the first things I learned about you is you love Batman and you ain't afraid of no ghosts. Uh, this is- Oh boy, yeah, that is true. There's proof of one of those things right behind me. If I'm- the, yep. The yep. Weird, yep. The, there he is. There oh, he is. I don't even see Robin. Boy wonder. Robin over there too. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of Batman stuff uh, floating around here. And yes, there's still there's still a Christmas tree up. Cause why not? People. Now we don our gay apparel. Follow yeah. la, la, la 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 la. Why not? You know, people get genuinely upset when they i mean some people do like they take exception to the fact that you that you still have your christmas tree up and um or that i rather um when you tell people that they're like well i don't understand what they like a couple of people have tried to like put me on trial for it i'm like well, you know i got i got no reason to uh to take it down right now what is this, the Spanish Inquisition? What? It's, it's your house. You pay I rent know. there. I mean, don't you own it? Like, oh, that's it's your house. Look, it's, uh, I was actually going to take it down when, I'm not kidding. So the thing, the, the thing is, here's how the whole Christmas tree thing started. Um, I think three Christmases ago, I put the tree up. It was my first time putting up a Christmas tree in my place. And then Christmas came and went and I just didn't get around to it. And that Christmas tree stayed up for, I think, a year and a half. And then, I remember this on the Instagrams. Yeah. And then this time last year, then I decided, well, I'll just have a Christmas party to take the tree down. And I had a tree detrimming party and invited a bunch of people over. And the thing is, you, you came uh, over and everyone had to take one ornament off the tree and put it in the box. It's basically how I got people to do a bunch of work for me. Wow, you did you at least bribe them with wine? Yeah, there was plenty of wine. We had Christmas cookies. I, I feel like that was fair. Yeah, uh, a friend of mine, comedian Heather Thompson came over. We baked Christmas cookies. We, we So here's the thing, the Christmas tree was up, but I had taken all the other decorations down, put all the decorations back up, had a Santa, and uh, it was great. Santa Claus walked around just talking to folks, not really doing anything, just talking. And um, yeah, it was great. By the end of the party, Christmas tree completely uh, de ornamented. De Christmas. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It was a perfect idea. So this year, I, I got the idea to do it again. And I put the tree up. Christmas came and went, and, and I was like, it is kind of funny that it's February and this tree is still up. And then in March, I was going to take it down, and then all this happened. And I was like, you know what? We're, the Christmas tree ain't got to be nowhere. Oh, I mean, look, I don't remember what day it is most days. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, what keeps me on a daily schedule is having this these lovely conversations with people that I like who are also creatives and do dope stuff. Yeah, this is also, great. Also, my mother sends me screenshots, and it's it's very self affirming. Very. Self well, thank you, thank you to mother. It, and she just mentioned Santa. She's literally giving me the really? play by play. I will send you the amazing screenshots later. I I appreciate that. Also, apologies for whatever is happening with my hair. The, my like my Christmas tree. We're just gonna let this grow and go and see what happens. And like the days, which we don't know which. Who's going to the barber right now? Yo, I know someone who I had to talk out of going to the barber. Like Woo! two weeks ago. You, look, you know some folks just can't be told that now is not the time. Guys, yes, I'm gonna keep messing with this hair 
until I get this one. Get it right. I was doing that in a Zoom call today. That's the <laughs> worst thing about being on video chat all day long is that I'm sitting there going, is it my left side? Is it yeah, my right know. side? And then they have a mohawk, so neither side is ever really gonna I know, yeah, you look like you just stepped out of the, the hair and makeup room and walked into this so don't please don't even, here's what I, is, I got a pair of clippers though i gotta see look look here's the thing here's the thing no 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 no. i am actually gonna downplay this because uh -huh. this is one level i got i got all i gotta do is get the clippers out and be real careful with the lowest guard possible this is one there's no fade there's nothing <laughs> i'm not I, i'm afraid to take that risk i won't do it on my own head although now is the time because my yeah. hair is a hey, I don't know. Here's what will alleviate the problem. Hold on. Oh, it's, do I have, Please I let it be a not. Batman hat. Please this, let it be a Batman hat. It's not a Batman hat. Sorry to disappoint. But <laughs> it's a cat and man hat. How about that? Can we do I this? I love <laughs> oh. mm. <laughs> Tell me Meryl. That's a deep cut. For oh, it. wow. Or I know, wow. let's, let's skip right over it. Let's skip right over it. It'll you know what? So, man, uh, one of the things I love about you, Kev, is that you are ridiculous and, and straightforward and funny, but also you're one of the comedians who kind of have the trifecta, right? Like you do stand up, you do sketch comedy, you do improv, but you write and you've actually written for a number of TV shows and you, you, you know, we've had conversations about you working on pilots and, and working on treatments and all these other things to do. And I think it's like very interesting because a number of the comedians, you know, that I've talked to this week, we, we talked to Kev on stage, who was just purely digital, but was doing his stand up thing. Um, and, and it's kind of a balance, uh, and doing this podcast thing. It was in LA, but doesn't live in LA. Yeah. And then we had Frank Caliendo, uh, who does a lot of stand up stuff, but also has his own podcast, his own studio in his house. And then yesterday we were talking to Amina Mani, who hosts out at the knitting factory in New York and was just going on like purely stand up, like, and, and branching out has wine after nine and little small things, but you really, you know, moved out to LA and you have a good significant part of the work you do is is writing yeah. uh, and working on different shows and new Negroes. Um, you also have a podcast sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, so, well, yeah, not anymore. It's hard. It's but... hard. Podcasts are hard. Shout yeah. out to my audio producer. I just send him things and he does stuff with it. Podcasts are hard. <laughs> yeah, they are. They, well, they're hard to do when you are, uh, the podcast of which you speak is called Denzel Washington is the greatest actor of all time, period. And uh, yeah. it it was super fun to do. It was very hard to do because me and my co-host, W. Kamau Bell, um, comedian and writer and host of uh, United Shades of America on CNN, um, you know, we were in different cities and I was in New York at the time. I think, yeah, I was in New York when we started it. Um, and I'd moved out to New York from Los Angeles to to start to work on his show originally. And um, and but when by the time by the time we started doing the podcast, he'd moved back out to California. And so we were doing it on two different coasts, which, as you can imagine, with guests, made it challenging. And he is a father of what, three, I think, I, he, I think he has three children now. Yeah, yeah. Well, he did a really great, he did a he did a really great episode about getting a vasectomy and this whole understanding of women having to deal with birth control, which is the only reason I know how many children that man has, which is a great feature. Yeah. You should, is it, should is it, am, am I off by a child? Is it four or three? I think I I can't remember. I think it's three or four, and I can't remember if it was that they had had another baby or they were like, "We're not having another baby." But that okay. was the conversation. He definitely has three. I just know that one day while walking through, um, while walking around New York, I saw one of his children walk past me at the. Um, it was the Opera House. It's on on Broadway. Um, the, you know what I'm, yeah. Yep. Anyway, mm -hmm. I've been out of New York too long. 
Um, Come back. The big fountain. I know I'm, I'm, I'm due. Carnegie. Uh, that, are you talking about Carnegie or are you talking about Lincoln? Lincoln. Thank you, Lincoln. And I'm walking with some friends and I see this child walk by who I recognize, who I think she was five at the time. And I was like, hey guys, hold on a minute. I, I know this kid. And they were like, what, why are you? But I didn't see any of, I didn't see Kamau. I didn't see his wife. And I was just like, why is she walking around and just hanging out? And then I, what I didn't see is, uh, you know, uh, Kamau's wife was, was like, uh, I don't know, 15 feet away watching, sitting okay. on the mountain, I think. Well, yeah. Oh, wow. So, um, but it was just a weird thing to recognize like a five-year-old hanging out, just out on the town. Just chilling. Just about the city. It's just New and, York for you. Well, not New yeah. York right now. Not, no, 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 no children, but yes. No, no, no. So, uh, but anyway, yeah. So let's, I'll, I'll go with, I'll go with three kids. Uh, but we did this podcast and we were bi-coastal and it was just hard to do that. We had some amazing guests on and we wow. did it together when we could. But a lot of times that I was either, it was me in the studio in New York talking to the guest or him in Berkeley um, talking to the guest. And occasionally we were able to to hook up, but like- together, And then you do uh, the tracking together and like do the intros yeah. and outros, which, I, which, I, which is still really good. Like, and I think, you know, for those who just not listened to it, it's it's not just about Denzel. It's a lot about Denzel. It is it's about- mainly about Denzel. Yes. But- <laughs> Denzel is the horse we ride in on. I mean, nope, my dad's watching, not gonna say it. <laughs> was that a questionable analogy? It was gonna be a questionable analogy that was gonna go to much ado about nothing and a lot of things about leather pants and horses right. that people ride in on. Look, man. Right. <laughs> look, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that PBS changed my life seeing Keanu Reeves and Denzel Washington and Shakespeare and leather pants and white horses. <laughs> Fun thing about that movie and Denzel in the opening scene, all of the main actors are, and I didn't know anything. I I watched this movie for the first time. That was the thing we would watch a Denzel movie for every episode and then talk about it. Sometimes with just us, most of the time with a guest. Um, and and I had never seen that movie before, and so I was surprised to see all the actors: Keanu, Kenneth Branagh, uh, mm. everybody. Um, they're sort of having this dance party. Mm -hmm. They're all like frolicking around in like a bathhouse or whatever it is they would do. They just come back from a battle or something and they're in the water and they're, and Denzel Washington, no frolicking. No frolicking. He's like, I'm in charge. Yeah. Would not, would not frolic. And it, it, it works. It's just fine. You, somehow I knew, I was like, there's, there's no way this man is no getting frolic. down on. No yeah. To the thing, he has not, I don't think he's frolicked in anything. He's like Lawrence Fishburne, right? So <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne as Othello, same thing. Like yeah. Othello also hard part. Like people have to understand, mm -hmm. like Othello, like is like he is not a he is a feeling person, but yeah. he is not supposed to be necessarily the most likable uh character in all of Shakespeare. No. Um, whereas Denzel played a likable character and still didn't frolic. Still Denzel. Still like, he just, you know what? He's like, I put these other pants on. This is what you get. Yeah, yeah. This is what you paid for. This is what you paid for. So, so yeah, um, we uh, that was a fun podcast to do. And, um, you know, just uh, when we brought it back briefly. And um, and then we went away again. I mean, it's, it's one of those things, though, because Denzel Washington is one of those actors. So it's funny, like when you run out of movies, you, you pick an actor, right? And we'll get mm -hmm. into binge watching because it's clearly everything. That's all we're doing right now. Yeah. Um, and then you just put the actor's name in because there's a point where you run out of thoughts. Like you're not going to remember every movie you want to watch or every movie that's ever been made. No. And you just Denzel is one of those actors that you could put the name in and you will find yeah. a movie that you're like, Hey, you heard of this movie? Nah. Yeah, yeah. You want to yeah, watch it? Yeah. Out of time was that movie for me. It was a Denzel. Really? Movie. 
like, what is this? And I don't know if, maybe I, know. well, there are a lot of, like his early work, his early, early work, obviously, it's like, I don't. I, like, I don't are you like Mississippi Masala? No, like, I mean, like really early. Um, oh, okay. There were some movies, I can't even remember the title now, but like, like one, I think he was, a, he was a, a high school principal. I can't even remember the name of it. Um, I feel like there's a gauntlet for all, all black actors is that they have to be a high school principal at some point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Just, think, just really, really think about it. You're, I, just, yeah. It's the way, it, you know, I mean, Sidney Poitier or teacher. Even Sam had, yeah. Denzel, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, Morgan Freeman. Oh, yeah. Morgan Freeman. Mm, mm -hmm. Lean on me. That's a good movie. That's, you know what? We were trying to think about Morgan Freeman saying something that was rude to somebody and we couldn't think about it. And now that I now that I recall to that, I was like, yeah, no, he no, Mr. Clark was not anyone to be trifled with. No, not at nope. all. Mm -mm. Um wait, see, Thank like here's the movie Power. Never heard of that movie. But that's a Denzel Washington movie. The George McKenna story was the one where he's a principal. Do you uh, have a favorite one? My favorite Denzel movie is um I it's I'm it's Crimson Tide. Oh, you know what? I can't shade you on that. It's a great movie, just in general. Yeah. It's just a good movie. It's the perfect. It's not. It's weird. It's like it's the perfect meeting between one of my favorite movies and then one of my favorite Denzel performances. And mm. so, because like I, Malcolm X was on not too long ago and I just started watching it and I was like, oh man, this is, it, it's such an amazing movie. I mean, there's so many, uh, what, oh God, Inside Man, such a great Denzel. No, Inside Man was one of those movies that caught me and I was like, have you ever been in a movie and like right after you're like, man, I, and it took you a second. It wasn't the first thing you said and you go, I really enjoyed that movie. Mm -hmm. I oh. want to, Watch it again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love a good heist movie. The cast is uh, amazing. I mean, Jodie Foster, um, uh, Clive Owen, um, Willem Dafoe. Like, oh, uh, um, oh man, I'm blanking on the brother's name. Who was his partner in the movie? Um, Hold on. So many. I don't. I don't well, know. well, it's almost like so. One of my yeah. favorite movies. Uh, he did was the Book of Eli, and Book of Eli was like, like that too. One of my favorites. Oh, I can I can literally watch the Book of Eli almost every single day. Like it's just here's, a good movie. Here's where when you when we were saying how Denzel does it frolic, I was thinking there's one exception, and it's not really frolicking, but it was in Book of Eli very early in the in the movie when he he gets the boots and he tries and he, them on. He got happy. And he dances around in the boots. <laughs> they, were, they were comfy and they fit. Yeah, it's one of my favorite Denzel moments. Um, he will, he will, Uncle Denzel two step. That's what he will do. Yes, yes. Oh man, that was Uncle Denzel before Uncle Denzel. Oh, Back. yeah. Because if you look at the great, if you look at, so I love the Equalizer and the Equalizer two, which I think the Equalizer two. Yeah. Um, Equalizer that's Uncle Denzel. Denzel. That's that's Uncle Denzel. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's where he Equalizer 2, well, the Equalizer movies, and then a few before that, because I can't remember, I think Unstoppable was before those. And but we 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 had all these um phases of Denzel's career. And yeah. I can't remember all the titles, but there was like we called one section the man. We called one section um he got game. We you know, they were sort of yeah. A lot of them were just based on titles of his movies, but then there was the the latest phase uh, we called the old man action hero. And it was basically, it, it, it was a thing that really, I think Liam Neeson kind of started. Where mm. it's, not, it's not just, you know. But when you say Sean Connery did that before Liam did? Sean's yeah. been old for a while though. That's true. That's true. But I feel like Liam leaned into it in a okay. way that, like Sean Connery, 
I think as he aged, he was like, look, I could still do it. I could still run around with Catherine Zeta-Jones and do all this stuff. But I don't know that, if you go back and look at those movies, I wonder if you would see that they they found ways to, even like The Rock, they found ways to um, have Sean Connery in the action, doing the action, but not like, we're gonna have you fight five guys. Or well, we're gonna he's, not, have, he's not breaking an ankle during a stunt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Whereas I feel like Liam Neeson really said, these are just the kind of movies I'm gonna make from now on. And Sean Connery was like, I'll do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And then I'll do, you know, you're the man now, dog. And that whatever, I forgot what that movie was called. Um, but, but Liam Neeson has said, we're gonna do Taken. Then we're gonna do Taken 2. Then we're gonna do Taken 3, 4, however many. Then we're gonna do uh, the one How where- How many I'm, will you let me do? <laughs> yeah, we're, and it's, well, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put on uh, some liquor bottles on my fingers and I'm gonna fight some wolves. And he just, he just became this, uh, Liam Neeson became an action star when that was a, it was really still seen as a young man's game. I think he started that. Yeah. Him and like, and Sylvester Stallone with all the, with the, un, uh, the, with un, the uh, everything. With well, the everything. Yeah, Never well. not been in an action. What are you, what are you, what are we? <laughs> or Bruce Willis in, in Red. Yeah, but see, Bruce Willis, that's the thing. Bruce Willis, uh, even Sean Connery to an extent because he was James Bond, um, uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone, all of those, uh, what was that movie, un, un, not un Unbreakable, or uh, the movie that, that Sylvester Stallone, he brings all the action heroes together. What's wrong with me that I can't remember these things? It's a whole franchise. It's the... Um, <laughs> People oh, are seeing us right now. I think but. I wait, hold on. They're all like, this is it. Why don't y'all know your movies? You can comment in the comments below if you want us to get our, our lives together. Or if you want to um, yeah, help us out with it. It's I um, mean, you can also just answer the question for us. Uh ooh, oh, I don't dude, like having to look this up every two seconds. Sylvester Stallone, I love him to death, but all I can think, oh, the expendables. Thank you. The expendables. Those guys were action heroes from the start, from early on in their careers. Whereas yeah. Liam Neeson and even Denzel. He just decided that's what he wanted. Yeah, because Denzel yeah. was not an actor. Like training day, questionable, could may have been written. And day, he really wasn't training, an action guy. Training day, sort of the beginning of the old man action phase. Maybe I was gonna ask, I was gonna oh. ask. It's a little bit, it's like, it's still like oh, 40s, 50s, but. Mm -hmm. I mean, it hurt. I'm using old man loosely because these both of these guys are are you know still young dudes running around. We're not watching like 80 year old men like try to leap over the hood of a car, but they still got it. These guys, these these gentlemen, both still have it. But they were dramatic actors that said, you know what, I'm this gonna. This is what I want to do. Yeah, I'm gonna run across a train from the back to the front while it's speeding ahead like a like a missile you know to a, a small new england town anyway that's that's my take <laughs> well and this is wait but this is what i love right because i think this goes into <laughs> what we've kind of talked about in writing and studying scripts and studying stories and and what are the acceptable norms and what's out of the box and how can you kind of be malleable with your writing um for you like have you been writing? Uh, what's what's kind of been the adjustment to your creativity? Because clearly, yeah. you are not doing stand up right now. Um, no, I'm not. I'm doing. Uh, I do a little show in my living room all by myself, just to keep keep things fresh. Uh, no, I yeah, I'm I'm still writing. Uh, I'm on a show right now, uh, an animated show on Fox called The Great North. That'll be out um, first half of 2021. I believe. And um, so our room is still going <clears throat> because it's animated. Our, I believe our, the production is still going because, you know, we were able to just pick up everything and, and do it all from home. Uh, and most writers rooms have, if not all have been like that. So are, they, so are the writers rooms doing digital or are they like, are, are, is this like a massive writers room where everybody's on zoom trying to chime in? Like what's, what's been kind of the development on that end? We've, for us, we've only, like, I know there are a lot of like Zoom table reads going on. Um, for us, we've, 
we're at sort of at the end of the episodes we were the, the chunk of episodes that we were working on so we didn't have to do too much you know zooming or anything um a couple meetings like that and we did it our last table read for our first 13 episodes we did that on zoom uh which was a lot of fun um you know we, it's the the cast of the show was great it's nick offerman megan mullally it's jenny slade um will forte uh, Dulce Sloan, Aparna Nantrell, all, like all these really funny people, Alanis Morissette. Um, so it was, it's very fun to like go to these table reads and even via Zoom um, and, and do all this stuff. But for the most part, we've just done our writing and our revisions at home and we're emailing back and forth and stuff like that. We're currently on a, like a little bit of a break um, just for like, I don't know, a couple of months, but um, the room and, and generally speaking is still going so and then uh you know while that's while i'm kind of on break uh you know you, you busy yourself with other projects not busy yourself but you know there are other things i'm doing and so i try to stay working and stay writing but when you have all the time in the world it can be very easy to let that time go so i, I try to stay as focused as i as i can and, and I mean, I think that's like the real thing, right? Like you wake up with the greatest intent to be like, I'm going to be productive today. Mm -hmm. And then it's seven o'clock and you're like, no, nah, I'm just going <laughs> to. Well, it's easy. I, I've settled into kind of a groove where, you know, I wake up every morning. I, you know this about me. I'm, I'm a big comic book fan. And uh, um, so I, I, I wake up every morning. I sit and drink coffee and read comic books in a big chair by the window, which is just lovely, a lovely way. I, I love this visual. <laughs> oh, it's, it's one of my favorite things. And I just, it's, it keeps me completely sane and relaxed. And it, I probably take too much time doing it. And I'm like, I'll just read for a couple of hours, knock out a bunch of books. And because I have a stack that I had not gotten to, and so I'm working my way through. But I do that, and then I try to do, you know, be as productive as I can after that. But things happen that take up the day, or you get a call, and you're, you know, I'm on my on the phone with my parents unexpectedly, but we're talking for an hour because we're just we haven't talked in a few days, and or groceries come and get delivered and well i gotta spend time wiping all those down and doing doing all the things you have to do now to sort of uh go about this whole you know affair um so yeah little things can get in the way sometimes um i'm used to working where you order lunch at work and it shows up and you you go eat and now i sit here and i'm like this sounds so like poor me but like if you if you if you don't cook it, you don't eat it. <laughs> so I gotta get up and and I am lazy about cooking. So I have to I have to get up and like oh it's lunch I better root around in here to figure out what I'm gonna I can't just order my little thing and have a burrito show up. So all these little things can you know kind of get in the way or or not get in the way but they can slow down your day and you know so I, I try to focus as much as possible well i think it's some people kind of and and we've and, you know this is week four of the, the conversation series and and some people are like i love the fact that it's jacking up the day because it really does like we kind of get in this convenience cycle i guess this cycle mm -hmm. where we are we are trying to be the most efficient highly productive human being we possibly can be so we've got all mm -hmm. of these systems in place and then suddenly there are no systems no, it's great. It, it I mean, like, it, the, it's the reset of it is great. Um, the, yeah, on a personal level, like, I sleep more. I mean, just, you know, like, I had been running on like six ish hours of, if I got seven hours of sleep, I was running around high five and everybody. Like, that was, that was, uh, like, I deserved an award for that. I go to bed now or between 10.30 and 11.30 just because I'm like, let's just do it. And I get, I haven't slept for, like I haven't had eight hours of sleep on a regular basis and I can't remember the last time. And I feel, 
since you were a yeah. child. Yeah, exactly. Since someone had to send me to bed. And, and so I feel better, you know, I just, with this whole thing, I was like, well, just try to take care of yourself on a sim- on the simplest level. Try to get sleep, drink more fluids, drink, drink more water. I mean, you know, like just do all the things um, and, and, and to help yourself. And it's great. And it's working for me. And I go in my kitchen and I, and cook what I got to cook, something I never did because I lazily relied on take out all the time or going out to a restaurant to get something. And so this has been helpful. And I, and I, I hope that I will come out of this and I hope that all of us will come out of it with something different about us. Um, and whether it's creativity, whether it's learning a new hobby or a new um, type of specialty or, or, or whatever, or learning just something personal about yourself. And uh, that that elevates us a little bit. I mean, do you feel like there's something that you're trying to, you know, do you have a soft goal? <laughs> no, I, you know, I, my goal is to be as as productive as I can because this is the time for me to do that. But I, what I hope for myself is that I retain the habits that I'm carrying on while, while we're all in this quarantine. I would like to, I would hope that when this is over, I don't just, I don't just stop using my kitchen. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like I, let me tell you something, you guys, I, I cooked so little that one day uh, I had some, uh, a friend and her girlfriend was staying, they were staying with me for the week. And, and uh, I was at work, they were at the house, my friend, she made whatever the last day she cooked something and washed the dishes the pan was sitting in my in the dish rack in the drying rack later i'm cleaning up the kitchen and i'm just putting my dishes away and stuff and i take this pan out of the dish rack and i look around my kitchen and i'm like where does this go i had i had i mean i'm like standing looking around like all right what do i it's got to go somewhere and i i had to call her came from somewhere it came from somewhere. I and I finally found like I, but I was on the phone with her, like, "Hey, this, did you? Where'd you pull this pant?" Like, I, yeah, I don't want to go back to that, Kevin. I don't want to be that guy anymore. I believe in you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe in you. I think you can do it. Thank you. I mean, I'm just saying. Next time I come out to LA, I'll just come make gumbo in your kitchen and just done. Just leave. And just leave it around and see if I know where to put things when when mm-hmm. uh, when you're done. Yep. All right, that's a test. Let's do yeah. it. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Um, so for you, like this is what this is week four, week five, kind of self isolation. Yeah, I mean, I think the first week that we were like, oh, let's let's all keep our distance from each other. I was staying in the house. I would get up in the morning to go like pick up a coffee and bring it back home. Or I, I think a couple of days I went and ran errands, just like some random grocery things that I'm like, Oh, maybe I need this. Maybe I need that. And then that was very short lived that like, but I could still leave the house and do that. Once they put the, the official order in place, I was like, I'm not leaving. I went for a, like I would step outside to, to do the, bring the cans in or whatever. I think I went for a walk, like a real walk once. But, um, and then I was like, it's, I went early in the morning when nobody was around. Um, So I would do that. But for the most part, I'm just like, I'm good. I'm just like, I'm almost too comfortable. I'm worried. I need to, I need to put on my mask and, and, stroll a little bit but i'm like oh, yeah i'm just i'm just fine being at the crib i can go outside on the little backyard like uh balcony or whatever it is the porch and hang out there um i can i you know i just don't i i'm trying to maintain a healthy paranoia without just being in my head about it and freaking myself out so a face, a, did you say a FaceTime paranoia? Baseline. Oh, baseline paranoia. I'm like, a oh, FaceTime paranoia. Interesting. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just just a, uh, you know, I think Dave Chappelle had that joke about like an old black man jumping out of the bushes and telling you something you needed to know at the, you know, don't do that young blood, that's 10 to 12, you know, like that type. I'm trying to maintain that level of, hold up now. Now hold, do, do you wanna do, just that level of, you know, that level of paranoia without it's totally putting myself out. It's grandpa paranoia, not grandma paranoia. I see, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Oh man, yeah. Grandma Grandma's gonna yeah. tell you all the reasons why you're gonna why you're gonna not yeah. go outside. That's a that's a red alert. Pardon my microphone. That's a, a, a if if Grandpa paranoia is yellow alert. Grandma paranoia is red. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of red alert, I hear uh, that L.A. has great air quality right now. It's 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 beautiful out. I mean, and yesterday was better than today. Yesterday it was I was like, did I the morning like the just the morning haze was not even there. I, I woke up and I walked out to my window and I thought. Is it the middle of the, did I sleep too long? It was insane how just, it looked crystal. It was great. I thought I would, it was like looking at LA on television, just like on a, on the perfect plasma TV. It was beautiful. And it's, and it's a gorgeous day out right now. Um, the air quality, but I think we all kind of knew, I saw something early, early, early reports that, you know, in, in China, the air quality had improved dramatically when everyone was sort of quarantined and staying in place. And I was like, oh yeah, of course. So yeah, that again, a great reset, you know, that, that's, yeah. so, you know. So for you, like as an artist, uh, as you're trying to keep yourself focused and trying to be productive, because I think we got to kind of give ourselves permission to also understand this is a weird time. Yes. Um, how are you? How are you like keeping yourself grounded? And you seem like, and I'm not saying this in a negative way, but you yeah. seem like a homebody. So you don't. It doesn't seem like you're going stir crazy. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, yes and no. I, I uh, will go out at the drop of a hat. Um. I mean, we met in New York, and especially in New York, you can just step out of your apartment, and it's like a parade a party. And just carries you down. The, yeah, um, you know where I live in Los Angeles, a little bit of the same. I could walk down the hill, and there is just a like a three minute walk, and boom, there I am, and restaurants, bars, all this stuff, meeting friends, the whole the whole thing. Like a lot of us do so i i do miss those things yeah. but i have a lot of stuff to do that i that the going out was always my excuse for why i didn't get a lot of that stuff done even even just uh, you know um things like reading or or um putting together this puzzle or this Taking thing down a christmas tree what taking down a Christmas tree? I, you know, yeah. I mean, we're just pulling the things. I'm just using examples that I'm making up. Um, just pulling them out of the air. Just pulling them out of the air. But you know, yeah, things that um, whether it's like work stuff, writing, um, any kind of st you know, working on whatever craft. I just feel like I going out as much as I love to be home, and comedians, you know, when we don't when we're not working, um, a lot of times we love like, oh, I can go. Or when a show is, is like, it's 8.30, I can go home? All right, you know, I, I think a lot of comics love that. Yeah. And so, so yeah, uh, I, I think I used going out um, as, not, I wasn't using it as an excuse, but it was definitely like, oh, I could be home doing this, but I'm out in these streets, you know, like, so the streets being just down the street for my. <laughs> I mean, but these streets are empty, and you are home, which is great. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you know, yeah. I have a giant Yoda. I somebody bought this uh, 
yeah, I got this for Christmas. Uh, I have a giant Lego Yoda that I have not had a chance to build. And it's can getting this, built. Can this please be an Instagram story? I feel like this would make great content. I, I will do my best. I'm just saying, look, who doesn't want a giant Lego Yoda? I, I don't look, know those people. The thing about, I don't know that my family knew this about me, but I had just gotten into Legos anyway, just this past, I think because of the last Comic-Con. Last Comic-Con. Oh, you're talking about the huge Thanoses and like all the like the big, massive. Yes. Yes. And so, but I just went, I dropped by the Lego booth and I was like, oh, this is fun. This is, an, and I picked up a couple of things. My niece is into Legos. So I would get a lot for her, uh, for, you know, for birthday, for Christmas. And and I started putting together, so I bought like a little, um, I bought Tony Stark's lab and a couple oh, yeah. of things. They do some insane stuff. Yeah. Like, like the setups that they do, like, fo like folks, when, when Comic-Con comes back, like when I tell you the stuff that the Lego folks do every yeah. year with their centerpiece, centerpieces and like their action sets at San Diego Comic-Con, it's, it's art. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I had no idea how relaxing it was to sit and put those things together. I would just put on a movie and then just start building these Lego things. And it was, oh man, it was just <laughs> such a, such a relaxing and mellow time. So I'm very, I'm looking forward to doing that. I have a Game of Thrones puzzle that my parents bought me a couple of years ago that I never put together. So I'm, I'm yeah, I was never a puzzle person. So I'm looking forward to doing that. And then just like picking up some of these books that I have been putting off reading. And, you know, I, I like to read, but now I, you know, I'm busy during the day and I'm busy, to, you know, when you're, it's like I, I at work, you know, uh, we're in the writer's room during the day. And a lot of times you're at night running out and doing spots, um, yeah. you know, doing stand up stuff. And, and then you're trying to squeeze your own projects in between there. And, so it can be hard to sort of uh, give yourself that kind of relaxing moment or two or three that you need, whether it's building a model or a puzzle or Legos or reading a novel or doing painting, whatever it is you do. And so that's been the nice part of this quarantine is, is that, all right, I'm going to do some of these things and be okay with not cranking out a, a you know 20 pages a day on some some assignment that I've given myself or whatever you know uh, trying to just find the balance I love that and actually that is the perfect way to segue to how can folks find you um, what other projects do you have coming up and you know who's the best Batman oh, well um I'm on Twitter at Kevin Avery. Uh, I don't tweet as much as I used to. Gone are my big time tweeting days, but I pop up there every now and then. Uh, otherwise, on Instagram, I am at Kevin Avery Comedy. And yeah, look out for the Great North on Fox um, as sometime early 2021. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's all right now. Um, as far as the best Batman, here's the thing. Um, I, well, Christian, you know, I mean, I mean, Christian Bale, it's okay. You can say it, but he's the best modern Batman. And I see that you're, you're being conflicted because there are, for those who are true Batman fans, there's animated Batman, yeah. there's TV Batman. Then there's movie Batman, and you gotta know that Keaton and Bale are both the best Batman for two very different reasons. The, yeah, yeah. I mean, Keaton. It's a trick or, question. It's fine. Be, or what? It was a trick question. It's fine. It really was. But I, I will say this: um, Christian Bale occupied the best Batman world. Mm. Um, he just the over. I enjoyed the the. Um, the Christian Bale uh, Batman's, you know, I I think most people feel that way. Yeah, Dark Knight was his own yeah microcosm. 
Yeah, I like, I just, I enjoy these different interpretations. So I say keep the Batmans coming. I, uh, I'm looking Are forward to, sure? I'm, I'm, I'm looking for, I'm looking forward to Robert Pattinson. I'm, I want to see what he does. Cause look, I, remember when everyone went nuts when they announced that Heath Ledger was going to be the, the Joker and they were like this, what? Come on. And now, you know, um, Greatest Joker. here's the thing That's though, the I think that Ben Affleck's Batman, Ben Affleck slash Zack Snipe, I think they captured the essence. Don't you, don't you dare, don't you dare. I think more than any other Batman on film, they captured the essence of how Batman fights. And- Okay, and okay, oh, oh. I, I, you know, because, and I don't even think, and I think Ben Affleck was actually, uh, I think he was a good Bruce Wayne. I think it was an interesting Bruce Wayne. I, I didn't. Oh, he was a great Bruce Wayne. Yeah. He was a horrible Batman. Yeah, but, sure. I just think that, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm now going, I'm like looking at this side by side of him in the cowl, out of the cowl. Um, that scene where he jumps into the uh, the warehouse and he takes on all those guys, he takes yeah. on like 12 guys. That is how Batman fights. And I feel like it's the first time we saw that. Well, I also think, and here's the thing I will give, and I've never said anything nice about Batflack, um, but I will give you this. <laughs> if you had a true actor who sat down and studied what it would be like if Batman was a real person who mm -hmm. has no superpowers, who is continuously getting injured, who is continuously getting fixed up, doesn't have any kind of superhuman ability to speed heal himself. His right. bones are bruised and battered and there's all sorts of cartilage like on top of where it healed or didn't heal right because he didn't go yeah. to the right place. Yes, that is exactly how a 40, 50 year old man who'd been doing this for 10, 15, 20 years and beating himself up would be fighting. I agree, and I've never heard it from that perspective, but yes. But I don't think any of the movies have captured that. that and I, that's something even I haven't thought about. And, and I've been reading a lot of Batman lately. Mm. So yeah, that's kind of an amazing thing is this guy dragging himself out every night and against better judgment, coming in and going, just patch me up so I can go, just keep, just, so I can, just do it. Just abusing keep doing it. And I don't think that was even captured as much in the Nolan Batman movies. Do you uh, know who captured it though? Who? The CW, when they did the last crossover event, brought in the Batman from the animated series and they had him as an old man Batman. And he even had break, like I believe it was braces. Don't if anybody wants to correct me, you can correct me. He had braces on his leg and his back because he had actually just gotten that injured in the in the crisis. Um, in the crisis, one of the worlds where um, where uh, Batgirl went to, she ran into an older version of Bruce. I have to. I, they're on my DVR. I haven't. I'm very behind on all those all those shows. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I I the I just keep going back to Affleck's the fighting style. Yeah. Aside, I because here's the other thing too. I didn't like. Now we're really going down the nerd path here. But what I what I would really bothered me is in those Batman versus Superman movies and and Justice the idea that they took this Batman and they made him older, and they made him like this veteran who's been around for a while. Because he's just meeting Superman and their best friends. And essentially they came up together. And I didn't like the idea that Superman was this young guy and Batman was this old vet because that sort of negates the relationship that you know, one of the best, if not the best relationships in DC Comics. And I feel like they had an opportunity to really do something there and they didn't. I still enjoyed the performance for the most part. But um, I, I just, I feel like Ben Affleck was, um, I feel like a lot of them were hobbled by a movie that could have been 
much better. Oh, it's a script that could have been. It's fine. No, no, no. Uh, I mean, but that's also like I had personal problems. Although, great movie. Nope, no, no. I was like, why? Why is the original Ant Man so old now? Why is he so old? Why? Hmm. But that's um, the, the original Avenger. Anyway, I'm not going to talk bad about about that, and I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. But mm -hmm. I had like that's that's akin to what you're. I'm like sure. Why yeah. can't it be dying? Got great hair. No, well, he did a great job. Yeah, but I was like, uh, sure. I no, I did that. Crossed my mind. I was not as big a um, an Ant Man. A uh, fan growing up in the you know and, and but it was like oh so the so the original Ant Man so we got the first Avengers here but the original Ant Man is you know but but see here's the other thing all of this he was also older than the original he was like one of the oldest Avengers when he when it was oh, really? the original Avengers like he was significantly older than Janet okay sure. we're gonna go down a nerd path we should no. say goodbye. And, and, and do this offline. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Tomorrow is going to be the last show of the week. We have got the very, 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 very funny Janelle James, uh, who is going to be on. And uh, she's going to be wrapping this thing up. Thank you so much again, Kevin. You're thank you. <laughs> we, we proved life. We got up today. We did it. <laughs> one, one more day.